The Hometown Historian Channel welcomes you to another episode of the Heroines of Hometown History. Thanks, everyone. Today on Heroines of Hometown History, we are talking about Mary Harris Jones, also known as Mother Jones. Uh, so that was starting about 1897. She was considered to be the most famous female labor activist of the 19th century. She was a self-proclaimed hellraiser in the cause of economic justice. She was so strident that a U.S. attorney once said of her, labeled her as the most dangerous woman in America. Mary Harris Jones was born in 1837 in County Cork, Cork, Ireland. Her family eventually moved to Toronto, Canada, and as she grew up, she decided to move down into Michigan, where she became a teacher in a Catholic school. And then eventually, as she moved down to Chicago, she became a seamstress. In 1861, she married George Jones, who was a member of the Iron Molding Union, which him being part of a union probably, I would say, would be a big influence to seeing how his treatment was much different than those that were not unionized and had no pro worker protections. Sadly, well, I won't say sadly yet, but she had four children in six years with George, but sadly in 1867, her family, including her husband, all died of yellow fever. For the rest of her life, she dressed in black as a sign of mourning for her family. She uh, returned to Chicago to be a seamstress because uh, they had been in Memphis when uh, the family had passed away. Uh, in Chicago, she became a se seamstress again but she lost everything in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. She did find solace, though, uh, in going to the meetings of the Knights of Labor, and in 1877, she decided to take up the cause of the working people. She focused on the rising number of the working poor during in industrialization. Uh, she especially concentrated on as the wages shrank hours increased, and workers had no insurance for unemployment, um, for health care, or for old age. Uh, she first showed her oratorial and organizing ability during the Great Railroad Strike of 1877 in Pittsburgh. Uh, she took part in and led many hundreds of strikes over the next roughly 20 years, and uh, including those that led to, they're known as the Haymarket Riot in Chicago in 1886. Uh, for a couple years, though, she paused in 1899 to write uh, the book The New Right, and she also wrote a two-volume letter, The Letter of Love and Labor, in 1900 and 1901. In 1900, she began to focus on my, the miners, uh, mainly in West Virginia and in Pennsylvania. Uh, these were two of the areas that were probably the hardest, and including Ohio, that really <coughs> the miners had rarely any rights whatsoever. And <coughs> she worked very, very hard on their behalf to try to unionize them, to get them protections and safety for it was one of the hardest jobs and the most unsafe jobs uh, in the country. She went out west to Colorado and worked for about a decade. Uh, before a disagreement with the one workers' union that she worked for 
and came back to West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Uh, unfortunately, in one of the riots, 1912-1913, uh, she was convicted of a conspiracy to commit murder uh, and was granted 20-year sentence. But due to public uh, outcry, the uh, governor wound out uh, commuting her sentence, and uh, she was let free. Uh, oddly, uh, with her, and part of this might have been her Catholic background, but part of it, she never really was a supporter of the women's suffrage. Uh, she felt that a woman didn't need uh, the vote to, as she put it, to raise hell. And in Colorado, especially, women did have the right, and she just didn't. She didn't agree with it. She was sort of a contrast in certain degrees, but she certainly uh, made her uh, presence felt, and she certainly made a huge difference and is a, a, certainly a heroine of hometown history and is a hero to many because without her, the, she's the major reason for so many of the uh, reasons that there's worker rights today. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.